seems like no matter what you do sometimes, your efforts go underappreciated or unappreciated, period. You know, all we do, man, is try to give men the information they need to become the best version of themselves. No hate. We love women. We don't hate them. We just don't take no foolishness. And we can't be controlled by our lust. Those men can, but not us. How for some lay us down is the motto. Sims claiming that they pimps, but they not though. How for some lay us down is the motto. Suckers claiming to be players, but they not though. How for some lay us down is the motto. Drinks acting like they max, but they not though. How for some lay us down is the motto. They just claiming to be alpha, but they not though. Now I'm not gonna tell you, man, that you shouldn't value your woman at all. A woman does have value, but you can't overvalue her and convince yourself that she brings more value to your life than you bring to hers. You know, just the protection and provision is more than a woman can ever make up for, man. So I'm not saying don't give her her props for what she does, but damn sure never make her feel like she's more important to you than you are to her because it's just a figment of your imagination. She knows the truth, so you have to understand the truth as well. This is called the abundance mindset. There's nothing she can give you that you can't give yourself. Besides a baby. And do you really want one of those right now? Nope. Alpha sub laid us down, it's the motto. Sims claiming that they pimps, but they not though. Alpha sub laid us down, it's the motto. Suckers claiming to be players, but they not though. Alpha sub laid us down, it's the motto. Drinks acting like they max, but they not though. Alpha sub laid us down, it's the motto. See, the main thing that men let women slide with is shut up in this and obedience. Now, when you use the term obedience with a woman, she automatically relates that to being a slave. But slaves aren't obedient. Obedience is a choice. Slaves either do it or die. Shut up in this is another thing that women have a problem with. It doesn't mean you can't talk. It means that you can't talk when I'm talking. It means that when we're talking about things that I do as the man, you don't have an opinion on those things because I make decisions based on facts, not opinions, not even my own opinions, and most certainly not yours. Alpha sub laid us down, it's the motto. Sims claiming that they pimps, but they not though. Alpha sub laid us down, it's the motto. Suckers claiming to be players, but they not though. Alpha sub laid us down, it's the motto. Tricks acting like they mad. Welcome to the Alpha Sphere, the only place on the planet that's totally engulfed in positivity and totally submerged in alpha energy. I'm your host, Dr. BOA. Surgeon, helping you to become 
your most alpha version. Old and new you, this is where they will be merging. Get money today, so later you'll be spurging. Tell them haters you do not care what they say about you. Just get to live out to make them live without you. We your vision spouse to living in from chasing it. When they say your name, just make sure they put some base on it. Trying to become the most alpha version of you. Dying to become the most alpha version of you. Striving to become the most alpha version of you. Fighting to become the most alpha version of you. What's good, homies? What's good? It's your man, Dr. BOA, man. Y'all let me know if y'all can hear me loud and clear. Stick a one in the chat for me, man. Let me know if y'all can hear me loud and clear. We are in the building. Salute to the Green Labor Gang. Bless up to the Alpha Sphere. Look at here, man. We got the ice in the background because we about to get cold tonight, man. We about to really drop them. Every now and then, I need to come through and drop the ism in the Alpha Sphere, man. So I'm going to tell you like this, man. If you got a problem with anything that got anything to do with the ism, anything that got anything to do with the pimping, man, you might well slide on out. Because we about to really, really, really have a real talk in here tonight, man. Salute to my brothers in the building, man. King, what up, man? I see you, man. Mr. O, what up? What up? Salute to the brother, Mr. O, man. Y'all check him out over there. AJ, what up, homie? Matthew Cousin, what up? When you like to know, what up? Ricky Webb in the building. Michael, what up, young homie? HJ3, my brother, salute. Roy T in the building, man. Life for a business. Ah, oh, yeah, man. Code name right there. Sean M. Jesse, what up? Vlado, what up, homie? Represent that Europe. Represent Australia. What up, man? Appreciate you being in the joint. Shy Alpha, what up, man? Rick, man, I see you, man. Cop to your flop. I see you, homie. Mellow to chill, man. What up? Adonis. MPI in the building, man. Salute. Rayshard Smith, what up? Flato, welcome to the Green Label Gang, man. Enoch, what's up, homie? Keep Ginseng in the building as well. Big Mo, what up? Anthony J, what up? What up? What up? So let's give the people, man, two more minutes to get up in here, man, before we go in, man. Hope everybody had a bang up week this week, man. Uh, this is probably going to be one of the colder piece content I've done, man, in a while. So let's, let's get into it. Yo, that's cold, man. Yeah, that's phenomenal. That's fly. I think I need to uh I need to make a commercial out of this or something. Well, hold up. I'm gonna take a picture of that, man. Use the thumbnail. Drinking that pimp potion, man. Salute to y'all, man. I appreciate everybody being in the joint. Get a peep out another minute and 15 seconds, man. And we're going to go ahead and get it in. Ricky Webb, salute, man. Salute. Appreciate the five bone. One love and friends told props, dude. Salute to you, man. 100. Appreciate you being in the joint, man. Let's get ready to go ham, man. Have a little decent talk, man. You know, here we go. All right, man. So let's talk about this, man. A lot of men don't understand, respect, or accept that the strongest position you've ever seen a man play, whether it's been in real life or on a movie, is when you watch the way a pimp play the game with his girls. You ain't never seen a man in your life that has that type of power in a situation. But we don't live that life. We ain't in the life. So we bring it to the square world. And if you go all the way back, my, my, my oldest live stream on this particular platform is entitled Top 10 Game Rules I Learned from Pimps. Phenomenal piece of content. Think about making a, a phenomenal piece of content. Think about doing a part two. Now I say this to y'all. First, let's clarify some things about Dr. B.O.A. 
If this is your first time here, this is the Alpha's Field. Welcome. What we do over here, man, is put all the principles in place where a man can become the most alpha version of himself. Now, once you get everything else in order, then you're going to want to deal with women because we ain't MGTOW and we ain't guys just going our own way and we ain't guys just about to go monk. We ain't about to do none of that. But what we'll do, we will place our demands and, and, and put our hands on everything that a woman is going to do in our life. You know what I'm saying? Whether she our girlfriend or our wife, we're going to put everything on the table so she'll know it's my will, no way, and no way is okay. And she'll go ahead and accept that if she want to stay. The bottom line is this. I don't choose on bra because I ain't hurt for no skirts. You understand what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I got a bra right now who will give me the skin off her back. Not the shirt, the skin. You understand what I'm saying? Secondly, I ain't worried about losing no woman. Because a woman leave me, it's going to be her loss. I paid the cost to be the boss of her mind and her time. And if she can't run the plays I designed, I'm going to have to sit her ass on the pine. That's just how I work. That's how I deal with women in my life. Now, anybody else can do what they want to do. With me and my life, it's my will no way all day. Number three, if she can't benefit you financially, then you're going to fall off substantially because you're trying to keep the broad around because you done put her on a crown. Let me tell you something. When you put a broad on a crown, man, she better be a show enough queen. She better have proven that to you with her actions and focusing on your satisfaction. She should have proven that to you. Then if she haven't, you got a woman in the crown that deserves to be in a ball cap, homie. And your life ain't going to never make it no way with that type of interaction with females, man. I'm telling you, the number one downfall of men in this particular society, man, is dealing with females from a position of powerlessness. See, when you deal with a woman from a position of powerlessness, you automatically give her the power. She's going to have the power. Ain't nothing you can do about it. So it ain't even about what nobody's saying, man. You got to vet the woman to see if she even has the value that's, that, that's even necessary to even deal with these things in your life. And nine times out of ten, you're dealing with a woman. She don't, let me tell you something. The majority of women don't deserve you at your best. The majority of women you meet don't deserve you at your best. And that's the problem. You got guys out here talking about they're chasing 50 women. If you chase 50 women, boy, you ain't got no value in your own self. It ain't 50 women who deserve for me to approach them. I'm a high caliber man. Super high caliber man. Another thing is this. The goal is never to keep a bra for yourself. The goal is to make her work to be kept. See, if you're trying to work to keep the bra, she already solidified in her position. She ain't gonna put in no work if she know you putting in work to keep her. If you working hard to try to keep her, working hard to make her happy, working hard to do all of these things, man, that woman gonna look at you, man, like a sucker and say, I got him. She gonna do whatever she wanna do. Gain 22.6898 pounds. Start flopping around the house, man, in old sweatpants and all that stuff these guys be dealing with. And let me tell you something, bro. The very moment a woman decides, man, that it's okay for her to be that comfortable around me, she out. Because you can't reel that back in. You know what I'm saying? You can't reel that back in. Once a woman gets to that level of comfort, here's the thing that you got to understand about a woman. Once she gets comfortable, you can't make her uncomfortable in that particular thing no more. You understand? Once you let her get comfortable. Now, you could check her on that from the beginning, but I don't want to check her on that because in my mind, I'm looking at her saying, well, something's changed in her mind in the way she views me and the way she views this situation for her to feel like she could come in here like that all of a sudden. And even if I don't drop her, uh, uh, if I don't drop her permanently, I'm sure I'm going to put on ice for a long time. Boy, I'm going to put on ice till she get frostbite in the feet. They may, have to, they may have to take a couple toes off, man. And that's what y'all got to understand, man. See, I don't, I don't call no name, man, but I listen to, well, not anymore. But I've heard suckers, man, who cater to women advising things that's the opposite of pimping. You know what I'm saying? Making sure I avoid what's unacceptable to me. Because what is, what's unacceptable to me is acceptable to them. Because I'm hella paranoid about being a simp. Boy, you, you know the worst nightmare for me is to wake up in the morning and I'm a simp. It's to wake up in the morning and I got numbers in my phone that I call and they don't even answer. It's to wake up in the morning and I got numbers that I text and they don't even text me back. It's to wake up in the morning and make a plan with a woman and she don't call me or text me. And I done made plans with her. 
Boy, I, that's a nightmare for me. I might well just, but I might well just go get me a fifth of liquor every day and just drink my troubles away. Boy, being a simp is a trouble for me. It'll drive me crazy, man, if I was a simp. I don't know how you do it happily. I don't know how you do it happily. I don't know how you embrace being turned down by that which is beneath you. I don't know how you embrace that as a positive. I don't know how you think you won by finally getting a woman to like you who told you in the beginning, I don't like you, you ain't my type. I don't know how you do it, homie. I have no idea. And you know what? I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to know how to do it. Because I'm going to tell you, it ain't no life that a man like me want to live. It ain't life that a man like you want to live. It ain't a life that no man that's the most average version of himself want to live, man. That ain't no life for us. The things I talk about, man, I've been doing anything forever. Forever. They ain't never stop working. They ain't never stop working. So let me tell you something. When you hear me talk about, man, I ain't finna be rejected by no woman. You know why? It's because I never have. Because I ain't never called approach one. Why I called approach one? I got a number. I never did call her because I didn't like the energy that I got from her when I called approach her. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't the same energy I was used to. I'm used to a woman being like, she ready to go. With, she want to go somewhere with me right now. I ain't saying necessarily go and be intimate with me right there. Not all of them, but she want to go somewhere with me right now. That conversation we have right here, she don't want it to end. She don't want it to end. So her question to me is, what you about to do right now? I said, shit, babe, I'm probably about to go hit this mall. Uh, well, I can ride with you. I can follow you over there. Well, let, me go, let me park my car and then I get in with you. All right, well, she, you know, if you go shopping with me, baby, you know what I'm saying? I mean, hope you got a credit card or something that you can, you can splurge a little paper on. I got money. I got money. I ain't broke. I could good, good. That makes two of us. Let's go. So the conversation, she wanted the conversation to go on with me. I don't know how to deal with women from that perspective. And when I saw the energy that you get from one when you call approach, the energy of, okay, you look good. I'll give you my number. But I really didn't feel like being bothered. I ain't used to that. I'm used to the energy of a woman, man, seeing me want to be with me right then. I mean, I'm talking about don't want me want to make sure that this ain't our last conversation. And so, yeah, if you done dealt with women and you've been rejected a hundred times, a thousand times, yeah, you probably feel that way about rejection. But I'm going to tell you like this. I don't want that in my life. I don't want it in my life, homie, because it ain't nothing real about it. it ain't nothing positive about it. I've been rejected in business before, but being rejected in business ain't the same because when you're rejected in business, there's a reason. If you sit down with somebody and you, and you, try to, and, and you present a business plan, and it doesn't work, they tell you what doesn't work. They give you some kind of feedback. That's different. That ain't the same thing. You walk up to a woman, just okay, well, okay, well, okay. Well, nice to meet you then. I ain't even telling a woman it's nice to meet her. Nice to meet her how? Come on, man. I ain't gonna do it, homie. That ain't the life for me. Hey man, if you like it, then cool, do it. I don't like it though. I don't like it and I ain't gonna do it. You know why I ain't gonna do it? Because I don't like it. I don't do things I don't like, man. I just don't do it. I don't, I don't do it. I don't want to do it. I ain't going to do it. I don't like to do it. And honestly, hell, I, I ain't never even, I don't know nobody who like to do it. So let's talk about some things right now, man. We're going to talk about a couple of principles that separate the ism from the way the average man deals with women out here. Because there's a huge separation. There's a huge differentiating factor. Famo, salute. Shinobi, appreciate the dub, homie. Pippin, pippin, game tight, big bro. Salute to you, bro. Appreciate you being in the joint. Now, here's what I want y'all to understand. When you get into the money, money is a tool of control. If you got a job, you're under the control of the money. You do everything that's in your job description because of the money. Let's just get that. Everybody's under control of the money. Now, when you take that out of the business world and take it into your personal life, if you get into the money, that is a control mechanism for the, for the woman in your household. For the women in your household, for that matter, that's control mechanism. But there's a difference between being a beta male provider handling all the expenses and being an alpha male provider managing the finances. See, as an alpha male provider managing the finances, everything that comes in the house comes through you. Like that stuff Steve Harvey talking about, you need to have this account and that account and that account and that account. Nah. Nah. All the money that come into the house 
come to me first. It hit this account right here. All the money that come into the house hit this account. The thing is, can't nobody get robbed. She know how much money coming in. She know how much money coming in. I know how much money coming in. Can't nobody get robbed. But the one thing that a woman wants is financial freedom. For us, financial freedom means not having to worry about money. For a woman, financial freedom means having money but not having to worry about bills. So when men think about men and women being the same in any kind of way, those men are lost. You understand what I'm saying? Money. When, when a woman thinks of financial freedom, she thinks of having money but not having to pay no bills with it. You know what we think about financial freedom. So I say this. You can take care of all the expenses in the household for a woman who ain't contributed nothing. And you automatically a sin. I'm just going to be honest with you. We don't live in the 50s. We don't live in the 40s, the 30s, the 20s, 1800s. We don't live in none of that. We live right now where it's very easy for a woman to score a bag. So the times of a woman not scoring a bag or a woman not even having a skill that can dedicate to you and what you're doing to score the bag, that, those days are gone, man. No man should be willing to foot the bill for a woman who's contributing absolutely nothing. That stay-at-home mom, don't do nothing but cook and clean and take care of the kid, man, that time is gone. That woman better have some skills where she can put in work for your company or your business or whatever you're doing, your hustle, your grind, whatever you're doing. She got to have something. Otherwise, she doesn't earn the, she doesn't earn the, it's impossible. It's just impossible for her to earn that position. That position isn't available anymore. Being a stay-at-home mom that don't do nothing, be a mom, and, and that, that, that's gone, man. Those days are gone. She has to contribute to the growth of the kingdom, the upkeep of the kingdom. She has to. Modern women aren't, they, they don't practice shut up and is in obedience enough to have it any other way. See, you could get a level of shut up in this, you can get a satisfactory level of shut up and in obedience, but in order to temper that, because you a fool if you think you're going to get the same level of shut up and obedience that your granddad got. You crazy. We don't live in that world anymore. Everybody has a mouthpiece. Everybody got some account. Everybody got some social media account. Everybody got something where they can talk. Everybody can talk. So everybody want to talk. But every word going to cost them. You understand? Another thing is this. When you let her stay home and not work. She has an idle mind. And a woman's idle mind is the devil's playground. I say all the time, a man's idle mind is the devil's workshop. He can get you, but he but know he got to work. A woman's idle mind is the devil's playground. He's jumping for joy when he says, boy, what? He let her sit at home? She ain't doing that. All she doing is what? Oh, I got her. And he on her. Send somebody he control into the mist to cause damage in your household, to bring negative energy to your household. So you can't do that. You got to make her work for you. you gotta, listen, if you ain't got no business, make her ass start you one at home. All the work you need to be doing that you ain't got time to do to start your business, make her do it. And I did say make her do it. I didn't say ask her to do it. I didn't say request. I said make her do it. That's the problem. We live in a society where men want to step and fetch and kowtow and try to go along and, 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 and say the right thing. Hey, man, listen, there is a time to say the right thing. You understand what I'm saying? There is a time, and we'll get into that later on in the show, but there is a time to say the right thing. And there's a certain way you can say something to a woman be saying the exact same thing but worded differently, and she takes it as a gift instead of the curse that she took it as when you worded it the first way. It ain't always about just going hard on a woman and, and talking to her sideways and, and blah, 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 and doing all that. No, that's the part of the ism that we don't bring into the square world because it's unnecessary. You know what I'm saying? You got to think about it. In the square world, women aren't built like those girls. They ain't built like working girls. Working girls are tough, man. They tough. They hard nose, man. They are beautiful, but they hard nose. They don't play no game, man. They live in a life. Now, they live in a life among savages. The average man, the average square, the average woman in the square world, man, she ain't never been around a savage day in her life. Close she been to a savage is at the zoo, homie. The close she been to, and her cousin Pitbull. That's close she ever been to a savage. And, so, and listen, man, when I say these things, I ain't making these up. Come on. If I'm making this up, where you heard of that before? I'm telling you how I deal with women, man. And here's the thing. A lot of women ain't going to deal with this, but I don't care. I'm okay without having a woman. That's the problem. I'm cool not having a woman. Because even if I ain't got no woman, I can always get laid. Even if I ain't having no woman, I can always get paid. So I don't need no woman. 
I'm telling you what happens if a woman is in my life. If she want to be in that position, this is what she got to do. If she don't want to do it, then she ain't got to be in a position. I'm fine. We can just keep doing what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, another thing I tell you is this. Pay 100% of expenses while giving 50% of control in a relationship. It's just dumb. It ain't even simple. It's just dumb. Why am I going to pay 100% of the cost and let the woman be 50% of the boss? Help me understand that. Help me understand that. See, a lot of men can pay the cost to be the boss, but they compromise and let the woman pay 50% of the expenses so they can have a 50-50 relationship. Boy, I'm not giving no woman no control. She can't buy control from me. She can't pay all the bills and get control. It ain't about the bills. It ain't about the money. If you got to worry that much about the money for the bills, homie, you don't need no woman. You need to focus on getting more money. I don't care how much of the expenses she pay. I'm not giving her the power. Boy, I don't care how tough you think you are. If that woman pay all the expenses, she got the power in the household. Care what you say. Man, women are slick. She'll let you think you got the power. She'll let you play like you got the power. When she controlling all the money, man, you don't even know where she's sliding the money off to. You don't know what account she's putting them off in. You don't know none of that. Boy, you got to be in control of your household. And if you can't control your household with the woman in it, guess what? You want to control your household before the woman got to it. The same way you are with a woman, when you meet her, you got to maintain that all the way through the length of the relationship. You can't slack up. You can't get nice. You can't get soft. You got to reward her when she does well and punish her when she does bad. There has to be rewards and punishments in a relationship. Women are used to that. When she go to school, man, listen, when she off in college, she know. If she don't do the right things in class, they're going to put her on academic probation. You know what she does? She accepts that because she already knows the rules. She knew that if she didn't do this and got this grade, they were going to put her on academic probation. If she missed this many days, they were going to put her on academic probation. You know what she got to do? She got to buckle down and get her grades back up. You know what she going to do? Buckle down and get her grades back up. Why? Because the rules of engagement were established from the beginning. You have these men out here who go into the relationship like simps and then you want to try to turn around and put some ism in it. Man, you can't do that. It's too late. Once a woman has seen herself disrespect you, brother, she ain't gonna never come and she'll never forget it. Don't you understand that? If a woman disrespect you, she'll never get that time you let her get away with it. Never. And that makes you different from a man who never let her get, who never let her get away with it. If you're a man who let her get away with it once, you are three levels below the man who never let her get away with it. If you let her get away with it three times, man, you ain't even, you ain't even in the same room on the same field with the man who never let her get away with it. You can't let a woman get away with things that you know you don't like. You can't do it. And here's the thing. If you can't maintain your interaction with her, you were fake in the beginning. Let me tell you something that men don't do. We don't change from who we are when we get in a relationship. We change into who we are. So if you started off strong, but that wasn't really you. You get into that relationship, man, that woman start putting all that pleasure on you. That woman start putting all that fake shit up and there's an obedience or even a little bit of real shit up and there's an obedience. Man, you're going to fall weak. And before you know it, you're going to be a shell of the man you were because that ain't the man who you are. You're going to turn into the man that you are. I don't care who you are. If you're a simp, you ain't going to maintain that ism, man. You ain't going to ain't gonna maintain the prism of the ism for a long time, man. You're going to fall back into the ways of your masculinity. And ain't nothing you can do about it. That's just what's going to happen. And I had to be the bearer of good news to you. But that's just what it is. You got to lay down the groundwork from day one. You got to. You got to put it in effect. Baby, this is what I need from you. This is what you're going to have to do. If you don't do this right here, we ain't going to make it much farther than we are right now. Take a step to the left. That's how far we're going to make it if you don't do these things. And you say, where the door at? To the left, right? You just took a step toward the door. I'm telling you right now, baby, I need you to do these things right here. I'm a, you know what I'm going to do. You see what I am. You already see me doing what I'm going to do. You understand? I'm going to do my part. But if you don't do yours, I'm going to nip it in the bud real quick. So quick, you ain't going to even know it's over. You're just going to wake up and you're just going to, I ain't heard from him in, in, in two months. And it, it's over. You know what I'm saying? 
I, I when, when it's you know when I put a woman on ice, man, I put a woman on ice and block on everything. I block on everything because if I don't block on everything, she's gonna blow me up all day every day. I'm gonna get back to back to back to back to back to back interaction all day every day. You know what I'm saying? It, it, that's just how it is. So I don't know how guys go about putting woman on ice, man. Don't block on everything, man. A woman drive me crazy. I put on ice, man. She gonna call me on everything, text me on everything, man. Be trying to video chat me on everything, bro. Come on now, you do it for me. But I tell them like this all the time. Don't worry about me putting you on ice, block you on everything. When I stop talking to you and you can still call me, when I don't block you on nothing, but I just don't talk to you. Oh, that's when you know. That's when you know. So here's the thing, man. Anytime, and this is one of the biggest problems that men have. Moving into something with her name on it. You cannot, you cannot invoke the ism if you move into something with her name on it. You can't. You can fake it till you make it, but you cannot be in control of a situation where you move into a crib with a woman's name on it. I don't care how soft and sensitive and how anything she is. You can move in there and everything going to be fine as long as you play her game. In that space, it's her way or no way. Now, she ain't going to be as verbal about it. She ain't going to be as vocal about it. And she ain't going to, you know, be as adamant about perpetuating that. Hey, look. I told you one time, shout is my will. No way. Well, why I got to do that? Because I said so. That's why. I ain't telling you to do nothing crazy. I ain't telling you to do nothing that's going to hurt you. I ain't telling you to do nothing that's going to rob you. Now. I ain't telling you to do nothing that's going to private you. Now. I'm telling you that there's something that needs to be done right there. And you need to do it. Now, from now on, when I tell you this, I, I, everything I just said, whenever I tell you to do something, that's the same thing I mean. So I shouldn't have to repeat this anymore. Just remember this. Log this this, this, this speech right here in your roller deck. So whenever I tell you to do something, just remember this speech. And that's what I mean. So when you get ready to say, but just remember this speech. because I don't want to have to repeat it. Let your mind repeat it to you. A woman ain't going to do all that. A woman just going to sit and watch you. And she's going to be moving things around. She's going to be moving the money around, doing all types of things and all that. And then you keep doing something that she don't like you doing. You're going to come in there and the door's going to be locked. The, the lock's going to be changed. The lock's going to be changed. That's just how it is. Ain't nothing you can do about that. Nothing. See, the bottom line is this right here. When you allow a woman to move into your spot, now me, I don't suggest co I, just, I don't suggest cohabitation. I suggest she has a spot, you have a spot. You know what I'm saying? Even if y'all have a spot together, you still got to have a spot. You know what I'm saying? And regardless of where y'all live, you got to have a spot. If she ain't got her own spot, you got to have yours regardless. But I will say this. You let her move into your spot, man, that's automatic control. Which the way it should be. As a man, you should have control. You should be able to control the dynamic. You should be able to. You know what I'm saying? I, you know what? I, I had a partner, man. He was uh, he was getting a house decorated, man, and uh, had an interior decorated in there, man. And man, he, I forgot what we were doing. We were somewhere hanging out. He was just letting his old lady handle it. And I'm like, man, I should, man, you, you are, you know what I'm saying? You think she's gonna do it in a way you like it? He was like, man, she got it under control. She already know how I get down. I'm like, all right, word up. So we got there, man, and uh, everything she, as as we were walking through, and uh. Everything the one was pointing out. And his old lady was saying, see, baby, don't that look masculine? I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty, but it's masculine. Every single room, she was saying the same thing. He had a train to know that you can make it as pretty as you want to as long as it's masculine. And so the career was laid in a unique way. It had a bunch of earth tones and, 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 and a little bit of gold stuff in there, man. A bunch of clay pottery and all of that, man. But it was beautifully decorated, but it was masculine. It looked like a, it was a bachelor pad. You know what I'm saying? It, it was a pretty bachelor pad. And that's the type of thing you have to do, man. You have to be in a position where you can train a woman to do what you want her to do without her being able to say anything. Because if a woman can say anything, she's going to say something. You know if you give a woman an inch, she's going to take two. You give her two, she's going to take three. You give her a spaceship. What she want to do, man? She want to fly the space shuttle, homie. Y'all know this. Y'all know it as well as I do. That's just what a woman want to do. A woman won't control. She don't want the she don't want the responsibility that comes with control, but she wants the power surge that come with control. She wants it. 
And if you give it to her, if you let a woman control your household, man, it's going to be in disarray. Because all she's going to focus on is the, the feeling of power of control. She ain't going to focus on the responsibility of the control. She ain't going to focus on it. That's why a woman can make five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars a year, man, still be living check to check. Remy Lowe, appreciate your homie, appreciate the dub. Asai, appreciate the super sticker, appreciate the dub, homie. Now, here's another thing, man. Having separate accounts, that just ain't gonna work for me, man. You know what I'm saying? That just ain't gonna work for me. Uh, unless she got a boat load of money. You understand what I'm saying? If that woman coming in, man, and she bringing some meal tickets to the table, I'm talking about five, ten mil or better, okay. All right, baby girl, you've done well. Your net worth is up in the millions. I trust you to handle money on your end. Now we're going to sit down and we're going to figure out how we can make the money grow. That's something totally different. But how many times you going to find a woman with that? How many times you going to find a woman? If you get into the money, how many times you going to find a woman that make more money than you? Know what I'm saying? If I make more money than you, Charlie, all your money coming in. Because here's the thing. I'm going to sit a woman down. I have never sat a woman down and looked at her finances. I don't care what she made. I'm talking about from $30,000 a year to $100,000 a year to two fifty dollars a year, fifty dollars a year, $75,000 a year, $300,000 a year. I've never sat a woman down and looked at her finances and they weren't in disarray. Ever. The more money she makes, the more debt she has. You know what I'm saying? So I had a woman made four hundred. dollars Man, she had 200, she had 200K in student loans. And they were just about to come out of deferment. So them folks finna come aggressively on that. You know, all type of business expenses and all that. So yes, the money was coming in, but boy, it wasn't much left over. So I'm trying to get you to understand, you can't worry about what the woman did. You can't worry about what the woman did, how she made the money, how much money she making. You got to sit her down and look at her finances. When a woman tell me, I made, I made, I made seven fifty a year. My first, my first inclination is, yeah, but how much of that going out? How much you owe? You know, what you, you know, and, and, and here's the thing. They focus on how much money they make and their credit score. Here's the problem with that. You can focus on how much money you make and make a lot of money and you can have a high credit score, but then you can have no money. Because all your money going out to pay those bills that you need to pay to keep your credit score high. So a woman making seven fifty a year, man, a woman can't even she can't even stack fifty a year. She ain't even stacking fifty a year. One been making four hundred a year, man, for eight years, man, and all she got stacked up, man, is twenty two bands. Come on, bro. I'm telling you, man. They're not fiscally responsible. Rashad Smith, appreciate the fire bomb. BOA, you're right about what you're saying about our sisters not showing cooperation. The Latino I'm dating is loving my alpha energy. Salute to you, BOA. Yeah, man. I'm going to be honest with you, man. Uh, unfortunately, man, you know, that just, that's how it is, man. You know, and here's the thing, man. It's not even that they don't want to do it. They want to show cooperation, man. They're just not built for it. You got to think about it. They're just not built for it. Nine times out of ten, they've been given too much control by men. If you don't come from if you don't live in a patriarchal environment where your dad and granddad and great granddad and all them ran the household a certain way and then you didn't sit in your own household, it's impossible, man, for a woman to figure that out. Because then she get out in the world and start dating guys. And what, die, what guys want to do? Chaser, validator, whiner, diner, cry in front of the bro, do all kind of things. I love you, baby. My pretty little baby, there's nothing you can do to keep me away from you. See what I'm saying? That's the type of thing that happens. So, when you think about this, versus having access to every finance account, every finance account, even if I meet a woman with a whole bunch of paper, let's say she her, her net worth five, ten million. I'm going to have access to all the paper. Like, I'm going to have access to whatever accounts she got. I'm going to have access to that. Because here's the thing that's going to happen. You ain't going to find a woman who's going to manage her money better than I manage mine. You ain't going to find her. You ain't going to find her because I live a frugal lifestyle. Yeah, I do I do fly things. Now, I ain't going to lie. I do fly things. You know what I'm saying? I do fly things. Drive pretty fly whips. But beyond that, I mean, that just, I've always done that. 
That ain't, that ain't in nothing new. For me, that's just a normal part of life. I didn't just suddenly hey, say, hey, you know, when I get some money, I'm, I've always drove a fly. I always drove a fly with this. So the bottom line is I'm going to always be in a position. If nothing else, I'm going to be in a position to grow the money better than she can. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be able to grow the money better than she can. And so I'm going to have access to the paper, period. Now, how I'm going to do that? I ain't finna say that here. That's, that game is to be sold, not told. I ain't lying, boy. I need, I need to. I think I need to create a course for that level of game right there, boy. I would never speak those words for free, man. That'll change your life. The way I accomplish that will change your life, and life-changing information is very valuable. Just put it like that. Very valuable. So another thing I say to y'all is this, man. And here's the reason why I don't have access to all accounts because I know for a fact, I know for a fact. That my mind is always on other ways to make paper. My mind is always churning on other ways to make paper. My mind, I'm always being presented with opportunities to make paper. You understand what I'm saying? I'm always. And so me, I just feel like, man, any money I got access to, man, my job is to grow it. My goal is to grow it. Whatever it is. Whoever made the money, if I got access to it, my goal is to grow the money. My goal is to increase the bottom line. That's my goal. And so, you know, when you think about it like this, man, you have to think about this. You can't let a woman spend freely. I don't care how much money she got. When she meet me, she going to curb her spending. Because I don't care. Man, I ain't never met a woman who didn't have wild spending habits. Even women who can't afford to spend be having wild spending habits. Women be making thirty or forty thousand a year, man, be trying to be trying to have Birkin bags and do you know, be try, man, be trying to well, well Gucci and, and red bottom and all that. I'm like, Charlotte, you make forty. You make thirty. On the red bottom, you can afford you better get some spray paint, let me spray paint the bottom of your shoes. But they still be trying to do it. So they spend frivolously. You understand what I'm saying? And me, I'm a I'm a, I'm a curtail that spending. I'm a curtail that spending. I'm going to look at her life, man. If people in her family using her for money, man, we finna cut some of that out. I, I, you ain't finna be give, well, I was taught that family come first. Yeah, family does come first. Give them an opportunity to make money. Who got a skill? Okay, let's give them, let's give them an opportunity to use that skill to make money. We ain't giving them more money out. This ain't, you know, just, hey man, this ain't the Red Cross. You know what I'm saying? This ain't welfare. We ain't giving money out like that. We give our opportunities. If you got a skill, I can help you make money off of it. Let's monetize your skill. We can do that for you. Man, I'm going to change her mind and have her view on it that way. Because I'm going to tell her, I man, listen. And I tell paid women this all the time, man. You know, fortunately, man, I've been blessed to deal with some women man, who make great money. I tell, I tell women who make paper this all the time. While you're giving all this money away, tell me the amount of people you're going to be able to call if the feds come say you owe them everything you got. Who are you going to be able to call and say, look, I got these business expenses and this got to happen and I need to borrow some money from y'all. Who are you going to be able to call? Out of all these people you're giving their money to, who you gonna be able to call? You ain't gonna be able to call nobody. So curb how you out here just tossing money out here. You're hurting yourself in the long run, you're gonna hurt yourself because you know good and well if you get out there, all these people giving all their money, they ain't saving no dime of it saying, well, let me save some of this just in case she need me one day. That's just a reality of the situation. So, you know, I'm gonna tell a woman some things, man, that's gonna, uh, the value that I bring to a woman's life is worth everything that I demand. And that's what you have to do. If you if, if the value that you bring to a woman's life is worth everything that you demand, man, place your demands with fervor. With a straight face and a straight laced look. And let her know that I'm not playing any games with you. This is how it's going to be if you're going to be with me. Another thing I tell you is this, man. One of the main problems that men have is they buy. They buy a woman's dream. They buy a woman's dream. Legal marriage is a woman's dream. Being a stay-at-home mom with no, with no responsibility, that's a woman's dream. The big $50,000 dream wedding, that's a woman's dream. Lifetime monogamy, that's a woman's dream. All of these things are a woman's dream. Now look around you in your life and see how many men you know that have already actively bought into women's dreams. You know what a man's dream is? 
is to have plenty of paper, be in the best shape of his life, have a wonderful relationship with the Most High, have peace of mind, and have access to beautiful women in different area codes. Let's be honest. It's the fantasy life of a man. That's the fantasy. That's the life that a man wants to live. And I'm not saying you want to have women in every area code, but maybe a couple at least. A couple at least. Your two favorite places to go, you want to have one now. But we don't live that. We don't buy into that. We too busy buying into the woman's fantasy, brothers. We too busy telling ourselves that it's my job as a man to be the man of her dreams. That's what it is. That's what we tell ourselves. And we end up living a life that's totally dissatisfying to us so we can live a life that's satisfying to a woman. Why? What are you going to get out of that? What do you get out of compromising your own joy to bring a woman happiness? Nothing. You get nothing out of that because there's nothing left. All the happiness is hers. Versus selling her a dream. Send her a dream of joy, romance. Let me tell you something, bro. A woman to give up the ring, she'll give up the wedding, she'll give up everything. If you can promise her life, lifelong romance, I can give a lifelong romance. For a woman, romance is a feeling. For a man, romance is just an act. It's like an acting class. You know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I'm reading the script. That's all that is, man. It's, it's, it's acting. Romance ain't real. For giving romance to a woman is not real. She just she just need to feel a fantasy experience. You know what I'm saying? Take a woman to New York, ride around on a horse and, on, on, on a horse and carriage, man, through Central Park. That's a fairy tale for her. It's a fairy tale. Take a woman out on a ferry and put her on the front and let her do her arms like this, like Rose on uh, on Titanic. That's a fantasy for a woman. Women just want to live a fantasy world, bro. That's all they want to do. That's all they want. A woman will live a fantasy world forever. She don't need to ever be a part of the real world. She don't care about the real world. Honestly, she doesn't. Now, the true definition of romance is this. This is what romance is. Just so y'all know. Romance is what a woman uses to show you appreciation. You come home, the woman got a candlelit dinner on her. Boy, do you understand how backwards it is for you, the man, to have a candlelight dinner on the table? You, boy, you shouldn't be cooking no candlelight dinner for no woman. You're doing everything else. The candlelight dinner is what the woman gives you. So when the candlelight, when you come home to the candlelight dinner, that's the romance. You understand? That's the romance. Romance is what a woman uses. When you come in and a woman come out the bathroom, man, and she got on this little, this little nighty and she looking sexy, man, and she coming out, man, and she role playing, that's romance. Romance is for a woman to give you. It ain't for you to give the woman. You already give her the fantasy world. Romance is her returning the favor to you. I'm not finna be feeding no woman no grapes. I'm gonna be laid back, the woman gonna be feeding me grapes. What I look like. Th that's just not how it's going to go, man. That's just not how it's going to go. The reality of the scenario, man, is you got men out here that are giving everything without getting anything back. And then they're perpetuating that as the way you're supposed to deal with a woman. See, you got men who are forced to sign over their rights to their resources via legal marriage. I don't buy into that. Y'all know I don't buy into that. I believe that as a man, as an alpha man, you can simply develop a concrete understanding about the relationship parameters and the relationship dynamics. You understand what I'm saying? You just sit a woman down and tell her about the relationship dynamics. Man, let me tell you something. I'll give a woman a wedding. She just ain't gonna get no legal marriage. I'll give a woman a ring. She just ain't gonna get no legal marriage. And I'm always have my own space where I'm paying bills at. You know what I'm saying? I'm always have my own space where I'm paying bills at. So it ain't gonna ever be no thing where I get caught up in no kind of way. I'm not gonna get caught up.
But if a woman wants the experience, she can get the experience. She's just finna get the legality. I'm not finna legally tie myself to no brown man to get jammed up like that. That's foolish. Any man who does that is a fool. Now, I understand if she paid and you broke. I know some guys who had to do that. Then they come up off the money. But then when you come up off the money, you stuck. Because everything you did, she had money before. Everything you did was done during the marriage. So she would get access to all of that. You can't even do a prenup, bro, if, if the woman got the money and you don't. So even with that, enough to be pressured. There, there, I can't think of the one thing that will pressure me into legally marrying a woman. At least the most I came to me and said, look, my son, I know how you feel about legal marriage. But I'm telling you, I am not going to let the people get you. Go ahead and do it. I'll do it then. I'll do it then. But that's the only way. You know what I'm saying? That's the only way. And I'm only going to do it then because, hey, man, look, I really ain't got no choice, man. Most I say do it. Okay, cool. I'm going to do it. But here's the thing. As a man, you have to be firm about establishing the parameters of a relationship. You have to be firm about it. You can't halfway establish it. You can't sit around, well, um, I want this, but it ain't got to be like that. We could do it like this. No, nope, I'm laying down the parameters of the relationship. When I'm talking, you can't talk. I'm going to give you a chance to rebut, but you can't talk while I'm talking. If I talk five minutes, guess who's going to be listening for five minutes? You. When I'm done talking, I'll listen to you. You're around me, so I respect you enough to at least listen to you based on this particular conversation because I'm not going to talk to you about anything that you don't know nothing about. It's a waste of time to talk to a woman she don't know nothing about. I'm not going to try to teach her nothing she don't know nothing about. And I teach her, I teach her a skill that can help my business. But even that, it ain't going to be something real complicated. I don't, I don't want a woman to have a complicated place in my business. I don't want her to have, a, have a, a complicated responsibility that could change things if I had to get rid of her. You know what I'm saying? I don't want that. So I don't really want to tie much of a woman to anything. In my, I'm not tying a woman financially into my being the man. No, none of that. I, I'm not tying her. I mean, she won't be tied into it. So here's the thing, brothers. I say this. Some men think it's cheaper to keep her. I ain't even talking about marry. Some men think it's cheaper to keep her because of the emotional cost they have to pay. Once you fall for a woman, once you fall in love or you become emotionally attached to a woman, then there's an emotional fallout. There's an emotional cost to pay for not keeping that woman. And many men care more about the emotional cost of keeping a woman than they care about the any other cost. Many men would rather, they give the money of if they can keep the woman around so they can love her. That's what they want, man. That's, that's just what they want. So, I say this, man. When even married, when you say it's cheaper to keep a man, I just believe this. If a woman is with me, that means that she's impressed me enough to be with me. You know what I'm saying? She's impressed enough to be with me. She's impressed me enough to be with me. And if that's long term, if it happens to be long term, I'm going to make sure she's straight on the way out. That's just what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that that's, that's always going to leave you blessed more, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it, it ain't no hard feelings. It ain't no hard feelings. I'm going to make sure she's straight on the way out, but I'm going I'm to I'm do that the way I want to do it. I'm not going to be forced to do that by no courts. You know what I'm saying? And that's my thing. Yeah, I'm going to make sure she's straight anyway. I wouldn't have a woman, man, that's contributed to my life for an extended period of time, leave jacked up, messed up. I wouldn't do that. Don't make sense. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't do that to anybody that had any value in my life, man. So it's kind of like if I had an employee, man, that... You know, that work for me for 10 years, man. And man, when they get ready to leave, I'm going to send them off with a nice severance package. You know, every one of them will get a nice severance package. I'm going to let them, unless they do some file and do like a big walkout on me, man. Get them that then. I'm going to take them to court then. But otherwise, under normal circumstances, I'll do that, man. Because I think everybody should be shown appreciation for what they contributed to your life. I do believe that. Now, another thing I tell y'all is this. Paying the cost to be the boss, but being rationed out sex.
I had to think about that one for a minute, man. You pay the cost to be the boss, and you're still being rationed out. Let me tell y'all something. If a woman can ration you out sex, she don't want you. She ain't attracted to you. If a woman can come around you and hold out, bro, let me tell you something. I, ain't, I don't even know what that feel like. I couldn't imagine. How does that even happen? How do you have a woman around you that you invest in time in, you invest in energy in, you invest in information in, and she is in a position to be able to hold back on you? Come on, bro. Come on, man. Sometimes I feel like I need to say, baby, I got a headache. And you tell my man, a woman, a woman rationing out sex to you? I'm talking about any kind. Everything that comes along with intimacy. How you going to get rationed out there? Birthday brain? Come on, man. I'm gonna be gone on my birthday. I don't want a birthday brain. I'm gonna be gone. Be out of town with my homies. I don't even get that part, man. I don't get that. That makes no sense to me, man. But guys be doing it versus taking ownership of her entire being. I'm gonna tell you, man. This is why I tell you, man, you gotta hit her with the savage pack. You got to hit her with the Savage Pack. No woman can resist the Savage Pack. The Savage Pack is going to make her think about the Savage Pack when you gone. She's going to be by herself thinking about the Savage Pack. And get to shivering. Leg get to shaking. You got to hit her with the Savage Pack. If you are so into the woman, you can't hit her in the Savage Pack, man. Because you so, you so in love with her. Man, you better get out of that relationship. You already lost that one. You lost control of that one already, homie. So I say this to you, you got to take ownership of her entire being by being wiser than her, which you are, being more knowledgeable than her, which you are on the things except those things that she's an absolute expert at. You got to be more disciplined than her, which should come absolutely naturally. And you got to be more fearless than her, which should also come naturally. That way you take ownership for her entire building. Now, what's that fifth thing, Bill, where you had that thumb left? Savage pack. You got to give her the savage pack. You got to. Those five components will put you where you need to be, man, with a woman. I'm telling you. Those five. So the autofocus go. Those five. So the autofocus come back. <sighs> man, it's the only reason I don't shoot with Canon. Now I shoot my regular content with Panasonic because I just like it's, it's, it's got good 4K. It's got good 4K, 10-bit, 422. It just got good files and they smaller files. But when it comes to just shooting, boy, it's phenomenal autofocus right here, man. So that's what you got to do, man. You got to be in a position to do that and you have to do it like you mean it. You have to do it like you mean it. And here, here's, here's the thing, man. The 50 50 relationship doesn't exist. It's just the label that's given to a man who compromises everything willingly. Oh, yes, baby, everything is up for compromise. Yes, yeah, yeah, everything's up for compromise. Now, this is what I want. This is what I want. But I'll compromise it. I'll compromise it. Yeah, yeah I'll compromise that. Yeah, I'll compromise. Yeah, I ain't nothing, nothing but a compromise. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I want to have access to all the accounts. What? Okay, well, you don't want me to have access to that one. Oh, okay, fine, fine. Okay. Oh, you want to keep those two in, and then we'll open another one. Oh, that'll work. That'll work. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Compromising everything. Compromising everything. I'm not compromising anything because I'm fair already. If I'm fair already and I compromise anything more, I'm losing. I'm a fair man. I don't try to take advantage of a woman. I don't try to get over on her. I don't try to do none of that. I am going to take, I'm going to give her what she deserves and I'm not going to give her what she doesn't deserve. That's it. That's why it's my way or no way. And no way is okay. I say again, it's my way or no way and no way is okay. Y'all ain't listening to me, man. Y'all ain't even hearing me, man. I'm trying to tell y'all something, man. Y'all won't even listen. It's my way or no way. In no way, it's okay. 
And that's just the reality of it, man. It is what it is. And I'll say this, man. Evaluate her opinion on decisions that you make for the household is fruitless. Because you don't make decisions based on facts. I mean, based on opinions, rather. Not even your own opinion. And most certainly not hers. Her opinion on a decision is irrelevant. Your opinion on a decision is irrelevant. How are you going to consider her opinion when you don't even consider your own opinion? You are making the decision based on facts. So when one want to have an opinion on everything, that's why I need that shut up in this and obedience. I need that shut up in this because your opinion is irrelevant, but you still want to waste my time giving me your opinion, which is irrelevant. Hey, I'm going to make this decision for the household. You know why? Because I'm willing to take the responsibility if things don't go right. And then, you know what, baby? I'm so nice. I'm such a good man that I share some of the glory with you when things go well. But I'm going to make the decision. You can count on that. Garrick. Appreciate the five bone super sticker, man. Rome. Appreciate the dime. Don't get to catch you live all the way, but when I do, I like to show support. Thanks for sharing your wisdom and helping men become better and demand feminine women. We shut up in this for sure, bro. Got to have it. Got to have it. Appreciate you being in the joint, man. Remy Low, appreciate the dub. Like, y'all listen to Remy, man. Smash the like button. I don't know what the likes look like up in the joint. I'm going to see if I can find out right now, though. I don't know what the likes look like in the joint. I don't be paying no attention to the joint, to be honest with you. I don't never look at it. I'm going to see right now, though. See what we're looking like. Cause I still, I still really don't eat much. Be had been knowing, man. I don't be knowing. Cause still, I still. Let me see what kind of likes we got in here, man. We got. All right, we got four too, man. All right, that's that ain't too bad, man. I can roll with them light right there, man. I can roll with them light. Hey, that's real. That's real, fam. Oh, that's exactly what I tell them. I say, man, you ain't gonna never find a man fairer than me. I'm the fairest man you'll ever meet. I'm gonna be absolutely straight up and down, down the middle fair with you, baby. I ain't trying to take advantage of it. I want to keep getting your best effort, your best energy. Alex, appreciate the five bone, bro. So, man, let's talk about this, man. Let's talk about this. We got a little bit more, man. We got a little bit more. We 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 gonna try to do a full show today. We gonna try to do a full show. You know how we get down in the atmosphere, man. I appreciate y'all support, man. While we try to, we still trying to bounce back, man, from this uh, skyline strike. Honestly, man. I just got tired of doing that celebrity stuff all the time, to be honest with you. But I'm going to get back to it because I got some good pieces, man. And uh, that seemed to be what y'all want to hear, man. I just, I really just had to take a break from it, man, to get back to just doing, you know what I'm saying, informational content. Yeah, I dropped some information in that, but I just got tired of seeing those thumbnails. So I just got tired of it, man. Had to take a break from it for a minute. But we back. Now, I'll say this to y'all, man. When you use honest manipulation, everybody uses honest manipulation. That's manipulation is it can be honest. It's only dirty if you dirty. Honest manipulation. You understand? Let me tell you something. When you diet, lower your carbs, keep decent protein, do that cardio. You are manipulating your body into doing what it doesn't want to do. What does your body not want to do? Your body doesn't want to burn fat. But when you manipulate your body into burning fat, it is honest manipulation. You're doing things, honest things, healthy things, to make your body do something that it doesn't want to do. Or to make your body do something, just to make your body do what you want it to do. And that's, that's simply what it is. That's simply what honest manipulation is. Now, it's like this. 
it's like telling a woman she's a simp may tell a woman she's beautiful. Baby, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. I don't. When my woman looking good, I just take my phone up and say, baby, turn around. Take a picture of her. She already know what that means because she already knows she's looking good. I don't have to tell her she's looking good. She already knows she's looking good. But when I take that picture of her, then she know I'm looking good. And then if she asks me, um, why, you took, why, why, why you took a picture of me? I say, I just want to immortalize this moment. You know, you, you, know you, you really did a good job of putting yourself together. I can see the time and the attention to detail that you made. See, if you talk a little bit deeper to a woman than the surface, you touch her in parts of her being that you can't touch her just talking about how she look on the surface. Women don't think about effort. Women don't think about energy. Women don't think about time. Women don't think about focus, but they like those words. They know those are positive words. They know those are compliments. So if I give a woman a compliment, I'm not giving her a compliment on her beauty. I'm giving her a compliment on what she went through to get it done, on the sacrifice, the focus, the determination, the time. That's what I'm giving her time on. My bra will have her natural. So sometimes she got to go get a, 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 a oil treatment or something like that, man. She might be at the hair salon, man, for four hours. Because then it'll take a long time to dry natural hair. When it's big like that, it took a long time to dry. So she might be in there for four hours. It don't matter what it look like. I ain't looking at the hair. I just know what she's doing, what she's going through to give me what I want. So I'm going to always compliment her on her effort, her energy, her focus, her determination, her drive, her shut up in this, her obedience. I ain't gonna lie now. Sometimes I'm complimenting a man on, on that dome. I'm gonna depend on how she go down. Is she really is she really in the zone? I'm a compliment on the dome. But you gotta give your woman compliments on things that have value to you. You don't compliment a woman on things that have value to her. She can get that from anywhere. If your woman beautiful man, when she go out in public, man, you know how the people gonna tell her how beautiful she is? Anybody can see beauty. Anybody can see an attractive woman, but you know her in ways that other men don't know her. So you can talk to her about things that other men don't even understand. You can touch her being in ways that another man can't even imagine. So a man be talking about, well, no, she going to go out there and somebody going to tell her she look good. Man, let me tell you something, bro. Telling a woman she look good don't necessarily make her feel good. But if you know how to make a woman feel good, I'm talking about deep down inside, boy, you know how to make her tingle inside. You got yourself something. What you are in reality, man, is a motivational speaker to your brow, man. You're a motivational speaker because I'm going to be honest with you. Most women have never had a life so structured than the one that they're going to have when they're with an alpha male, man. When a woman is with an alpha king like you and me, man, she's going to have a very structured life. It's going to be a very demanding life, but it's going to be so rewarding that it ain't going to be that bad that it's that demanding. You understand what I'm saying? She's going to be rewarded well for this life. The pay for this life may not be financial, but spiritually, mentally, emotionally, it is going to be an amazing payoff for her being obedient in this life. She's going to be there. And I say this to you as well. Think about Bill Belichick and how he gets the most out of reject players. Look at how Randy, Randy Moss was washed. Or so they said. Man, man, Randy Moss went to New England, man, and had the best year of his career. Set the single season touchdown record, 22. Helped Tom Brady set the single season touchdown record. You got, you, you got to think about it, bro. And you know I'm saying, almost won a Super Bowl, but the pesky Giants, that pesky Giant defense was in the way. But when you think about it, they went eight, they, they went 16 and 0 in the regular season. You know what I'm saying? When you think about that, boy, they, boy, they were right on the cups. They had a chance to go 18 and 0. Think about some of the reject players, Bill. Man, Bill is training players and got them back when they were old. Think about that. You got to think about what it takes, what kind of motivation it takes to convince somebody that they got what it takes when they've been told they ain't got it no more. You got to get the best out of everybody around you, man. And it starts with your woman. If you can't get the best out of your woman, out of your woman, the, one, the, 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 the person in the world that you can touch in every way, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you can touch it in every way. And you can't get the best out of her? You are not a very good leader. That's just the reality of it, man. James St. Patrick, appreciate the dub. Supporting the brother, keep it coming. Appreciate your ghost. Scott Weezy, appreciate the dub, homie. Appreciate it. 
You know, the reality of the scenario, man, is, is there's just some, there's some intricate things that they seem complicated, but they're not complicated. If you're a man who's in tune with who you are, then you're going to get the best out of your woman. It, it's just natural. Another thing I say is this, man. Telling a woman what to do versus asking her to do something. Man, let me tell you something. I don't care what nobody say. You be hearing these beta male sit man John and talk about, well, that's just having manners. That's just being mannerable. Tell a woman, hey, baby, can you do this for me, please? Man, I don't say that. I don't say that. I might say, hey, baby girl, come here, come here. Hey, go out, go put some on, take your sex ass to the store for me and give me some of this right here. Just that right there. She don't give a, she don't care how I say it. You understand? But I'm talking to her like that all the time. I'm touching her and caressing her while I'm talking to her. Whenever I use the word sexy with a woman, man, I'm touching her. If I ain't doing that but caressing her back, man, if I ain't doing that but caressing her arm, man, if I ain't doing that, man, but running my hands, running my fingers through her hair, whenever I call a woman sexy, I'm touching her. Because sexiness is exuded through physical touch. You understand? Not necessarily intimacy, but physical touch. That is the peak of sexiness, man. It's the peak of it. So I don't have to ask her, oh, baby, will you do this for me, please? I don't have to say please. I say words that mean much more than please. That touch her much deeper than please ever will. Because when you think about it, please is just a word people throw around, man. Most people don't mean it. Most people say it because they've been taught to say it. But they don't mean it. It ain't something they really mean, man. Some, some, it ain't something they, they really think is valuable. Most people don't even value it. When, when they say it to them or they say it to someone else, most people don't value that, man. Because there ain't no real value in it, to be perfectly honest with you. Now, I will say this, man. Saying, I appreciate your dedication and hard work is necessary. She needs to hear it. Just like employees need to hear. It. Remember, I told you, man, your job, your your life is your business. Your woman is an employee. She needs you need to you need to keep her employee morale high. How do you do that? By making sure you appreciate her when she does a fantastic job. Because the same way you're gonna reprimand her, the same thing, same way you're gonna chastise her, you know, write her up when she doesn't do a good job. You got to make sure that you also give her props and give her credit when she does a phenomenal job at anything. You have to, but it's got to be a phenomenal job. Not just some basic. She has to do a phenomenal job at a, at a at a tedious task. You always compliment her for that. Always let her know how much you appreciate her effort, hard work, and dedication, man. You know what I'm saying? Always do. That'll keep her doing it more. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and, and, and you can be indifferent. You can act like it don't matter, but you're not going to get the proper response from a woman if, if you're just going to be indifferent and not make her feel appreciated. Because a woman knows when she's working hard for you, man. She knows when she's grinding for you. Same way you know it, she knows it. And here's the thing. Here's what I don't want you to do. If a woman disrespects you, you can't wait for months to retaliate for, for being disrespected. Because when you wait for months, it's retaliation. You're going to retaliate. If you check her right then, it's just chastisement. You know what I'm saying? It's running a tight ship. But you cannot allow it because here's the thing. If you let months pass before you retaliate for being disrespected, she probably disrespected you about 10 times. Then your response is going to be too much for one time. And you're going to let all of it pile up, man. And it's going to turn into something that it shouldn't be. You got to nip it in the bud in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know how a woman has been, allowed, has been allowed to talk to the man who's with her before. You don't know. Men will let a woman say all kind of things, man. They will. And they'll just, well... You got to be a man and just and just not let it bother you. As a man, you just it can't bother you. You just got to accept whatever a woman says or does. As a man now, you can't let it bother you. That's what they tell you, man. But that's what they do. That ain't what we do. We don't play the game like that. We don't live our lives like that. We do what we got to do. Another thing is this, man. Telling a woman she's sexy. Just walk about, baby, you're so sexy. Nah, you don't tell her that. Pull her in the corner and slob her down. Sexiness needs to be exuded with touch. If you think she's sexy, touch her. You know what I'm saying? If you think she's sexy, touch her. 
sexy and touch should happen at the same time. That's why you shouldn't be telling some strange woman she's sexy. That's a compliment you reserve. Like that compliment has value. You reserve that compliment for a woman who's proved herself in your life to some extent. She has to at least have proven herself enough to be a part of your life in some kind of way, in a private way. You can't just be out here telling random women that, man. It's crazy. I be hearing guys telling random women all kind of things. I be like, hold up, bro. You don't even know that woman. And unless she has very low self-esteem, she don't want to hear that from you. But, but man, you know, most men don't really understand women. That's why a thousand men can tell you how to get them, but they can't tell you what you do with them when you get them. They can just tell you how to get them. But that's how you get them. I mean, you, you do this right here, you're bound to get one or two. You, okay, you get those two, now what do you do with them? Now what do you do with them? Once you got the woman, the dating game is over. Like, the, the approach game and all that is done. So what do you do with the woman then? Nothing. Because I'm going to be honest with you. A man who ain't got no woman and, and dealing with her from a position of power can't tell me nothing about it. If you ain't never dealt with a woman from a position of power, man, you can't tell me. I'm trying to present, you know what power is? Power is you control everything. That's what power is. That's power. I don't know, man. That's what I'm saying. I'm talking about dictator power, man. And many men just don't, don't understand that, man. So, you know, I say this to y'all, man. You have to understand that words have power and However you want to word it. Like instead of telling your woman she needs to start working out because she gains, because she's getting fat, don't tell her that. You never get the best results. You can tell her that. I mean, you can, you can tell her that, man, but it, it, why, why do something that's going to make the woman feel berated when you can get a better result by saying something else? Because I'm less concerned about her being overweight than I am about how it's going to affect her health. I don't want an unhealthy woman. I don't want an unhealthy woman. So I'm going to talk to her about her health. I'm going to be like, you know, you gain the weight, shot So it means that you don't even care about yourself. If you don't care about yourself, how am I going to care about you? How do you expect me, a man who cares greatly about himself, to have a woman around me who don't care about herself? Why are you saying I don't care about myself? Because you let yourself go. Look at you. You've gained a couple pounds already. You know, man, all the diseases that we have, man, goes around that, 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 that middle part fat. And you you got you to gotta do something about that. That adipose tissue right there, shot it's going to... It's damaging. So I want to keep living life, keep living life, enjoying life and all that. How am I going to do that with you and you let yourself go? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm going to scold her. I'm going to make her feel bad for not being up to par for me as opposed to making her feel bad because I done said some, some word that, that, you know, just hurt her feelings or something like that. Man, let me tell you something. You got to know how to deal with a woman and get her to do things you want her to do without hurting her feelings. Hurting a woman's feelings is never productive. It's never productive. And I mean, on down into the situation. In the beginning, oh yeah, you might have to break a few. You might have to break a few walls down. You might you might have to break break a few idiosyncrasies that she's developed over the years of dealing with Beta Male Seven and John. So yeah, you may have to break some things down in the beginning. But once a woman is on your team and you've broken through those things, man, and she is on the team working and grinding, man, you ain't got to be all. all Rough and raw and mean and, and, and talk crazy to the woman, man, and talk bad to her and all that, man. Man, let me tell you something, bro. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing, ain't listen, man. Ain't nothing pimp about that. You just to be honest with you. Ain't nothing pimp about that. Because the thing is, you in control of the situation. Why you got to berate the woman? You in control of the situation. The woman is there because she want to be. Because if you in control of everything and a woman still there, boy, she there because she want to be. You know what I'm saying? We live in a world where. Women ain't taught to have control. Well, women ain't, women ain't taught to give up control. They taught to have some control. So, man, if a woman, if a woman if she, if she's in a situation where you got total control of the scenario, man, she's there because she want to be. You ain't got to berate the woman, man, and talk down on the man. Talk to her like you are a teacher and she is a student. Teach her. How do you do that? It's kind of like if you got a Hispanic student in your class, man, that don't speak no English, you got to talk Spanish. If you ain't bilingual, you can't teach that class. 
But if you are bilingual, guess what? That's a kid you can't speak English to. You're going to say the same words. They're going to mean the same thing, but they're going to be a different language. So you got to talk a different language to a bra sometimes. It just depends on who the bra you got. If whoever your woman, now some women, you got to deal with them like that. They respond to that, but the majority of women don't. So you got to know the language that your woman speaks. You know what I'm saying? They talk about you got to know her love language. Now, I say you got to know her ism language. You got to know the ism language she responds to. Because you could tell a woman this, you could tell a woman the same thing three ways, and one of those ways is gonna get a better response out of her. And that's what we're doing. We try to get the best response out of the woman that we got. And that's how this thing goes, man. So look, man, I appreciate everybody being in the building, bro. Being real in the field, man. We're gonna slide out here on that 666 over there, man. I don't like that. We got too many, we, we got we got the wrong number of people in here. So I appreciate everybody being in the joint, man. It's been real in the field, man. And when you really think about it, man, this is about controlling the dynamic. And if you're confident in your ability to control and you're confident in your position of control, then you don't have to act up on a woman. You can talk to her in a way that's so cold that all she can do is respect and fall weak for it. It's better to have a woman hanging on every word with joy than to have a woman hanging on every word in embarrassment. Because a person that's embarrassed, their first line of defense is to put themselves in a position where they're not embarrassed anymore. You don't need that. You need her to go straight to work on what you want to go to work on. So save that gap. Save that time gap. Because who, who knows how long it's going to take her to get back up to full speed working, grinding for you, doing whatever you need her to do. If she got to get over embarrassment, son. It takes it take some women a long time to get over it. You got to keep that in mind. So look, homies, I appreciate y'all being in the joint, man. It's been real in the field. Uh, I'm probably going to, I'm, I'm just going to rock with Patreon this weekend, man. Uh, won't be no content coming up this weekend, man. We'll be back on Monday. Uh, we're going to start, we're going to start, you know, just really taking these weekends off, man. So on the weekends, man, y'all get a chance to just splurge on content, man. Come through, listen to some new things, man. And uh, otherwise, man, we're going to slide on out of here, man. So we'll be back in the game on Monday, man. King Ray Ray and BOA, man, we'll be back doing it big, going hard, man. Uh, y'all, y'all, hold on, man. We we over this COVID thing, man. We got a couple of couple of nice projects coming up, man. So y'all be looking for that, man. In the meantime, y'all put God first, keep grinding and growing. Got the homie Fit Flims in here, famo man, and rode the whole thing out with me, bro. I appreciate you being in the joint, man. Real deal, real still. Ash Rogers, appreciate the five bones. Keep the knowledge coming. Salute to your Ash, Julian. Appreciate the five bones, man. Appreciate all the other brothers coming through, man, with all the major support. It's been super real in the field. SJ3, my brother, salute to you, man. My squad, sniper gang. We are out of this thing, man. Peace.